Imagine this. It's a busy day on the carpet of an elementary school classroom. Students are waiting in a circle, anxious, frightened, and worried about being called on to answer. The moment you remember what it was like to be called on as a child in your elementary school classroom. Do you wish you were there? That there was an easier way for you and your school where you didn't have to be called on? Imagine what it's like for a child to face this experience. Today I am talking about children in an elementary school classroom and how to gain their cooperation on the carpet and in group work in the class by using effective communication techniques. You may not be an elementary school teacher, but you may have or know children that have to deal with their anxiety about going to school and participating in their classroom. Knowing how teachers communicate with a child can help you learn how to gain the child's cooperation in the classroom. After seeing many frightened children and being one myself, I decided to research ways to improve children's involvement in the classroom for the students and the teacher's sake. I will explain some basic principles of communication for the elementary school classroom. The tell, show, do technique and the technique of immediate positive, positive reinforcement. Peer teaching and preschool peer group interaction in order to better understand the significance of these teaching experiences. In the Vosky theory, children uplift each other by modifying a task and offering assistance to each other to help complete a task. When children model each other, they offer behaviors to each other for intimidation, hereby helping each other to see appropriate behaviors understanding the reason for their use and exhibiting a specific behavior in order to put them in their own life and understanding. Modeling typically occurs between children of different behavior levels of cognitive learning and social understanding, though it is impossible for it to occur between children at the same level. The reason behind these actions is for one child to teach another. One child will be more capable of completing a task than another. They can assist a classmate in understanding and completing a specific task or assignment. A more compatible student can build off the student who is less compatible and become more successful and efficient. Secondly, let's talk about the te technique that can be used to reward a child who can be cooperating in the classroom assignments and activities. The technique of peer group interaction can be useful in the classroom by giving a child a chance to understand the other students. I have learned from other professional teachers that peer group interaction is very effective as a helpful technique. Based on these theories, there are two things you can do. One, reward the child for appropriate behavior and two, do not reward for inappropriate behavior. The re reinforcement can be verbal or nonverbal. For instance, verbal can be, you are doing a great job working with the others. And for nonverbal, it could be homework passes or stickers at the end of the activity or task. Open-ended questions are very effective in an elementary school classroom because it allows the children to respond in multiple ways other than just yes or no. Questions stating, starting with who, what, when, where, and how are all questions and all important questions that students should be answering. It allows the students to share their opinion, whether they are right or whether they are wrong. It also allows them to practice their communication skills. Next, let's talk about a technique that can be that can use open-ended questions. The technique of open-ended questions can be useful in the classroom by giving, a by giving a child to be open. Based on these two theories, one, accept the child for their answers, and for two, allow the answers to be effective to the other students. The reinforcement can be verbal and nonverbal. 
For instance, the verbal praise could be, that's a great question. And the nonverbal could simply be a thumbs up. To develop uh, positive social relationships, you have, to be, you have to build relationships with the parents. So children feel safe, secure, and comfortable with their teachers. You also have to build a caring community with the program so that the children can know and feel comfortable with administration, staff, teachers, and other parents that volunteer with the school. Another important strategy is allowing the student an important opportunity to work and play together to build successful relationships. They need both time and something to do. This will allow the student to think together. Lastly, let's talk about the technique that can be used to make children feel more comfortable, safe, and secure. The technique of making children feel safe and secure can be useful in a classroom by letting the child know they are cared for. I have studied the majority, I have studied that the majority of professional teachers feel that making a child feel important is one of the most effective teaching techniques. Based on these two theories, the first thing to do is make the child feel safe and secure. The second is to avoid making them feel off guard. The reinforcement could be verbal and nonverbal. The verbal praise would be, if you ever need anything, I want you to know I'm here for you. And the nonverbal reward would be giving them hugs and making them feel warm and secure that every child should feel. What would you do if you saw a child sitting in your classroom scared, anxious, and worried. Today, I explain how to make your child feel more comfortable in the classroom. I have also discussed some basic principles for communication in the circle of an elementary school classroom. The tell, show, do technique and the technique of immediate positive reinforcement. The next, next time you have to deal with an anxious, frightened student who has to go to school, you will know some helpful techniques that can help you establish a trusting relationship so that the child can get the care that is required. Helping a child get through with these tasks and helping a child get through with these tasks. We can now be assured that a child going to school does not have to face this frightening experience. If only we knew this when we were kids, maybe it wouldn't seem so bad. Thank you, and I'm Devin Davis, and I just gave my informative speech.